behavior we want to understand. There's confusion in the world of trauma. Traditional parenting methods like consequences and punishment don't work for improving behavior in children. This has been studied and children especially who've been exposed to trauma. The more we chip away at all that unwanted behavior, this is the iceberg effect. All you're focusing on is the behavior, behavior, behavior. You're losing the fact that the more bad behavior seems to surface, there's a lot going on underneath it. A more effective method is to look beneath the surface for the things that are causing the unwanted behavior. By working on these things, the unwanted behavior will begin to sink away. So underneath the iceberg effect, there are needs, emotions, and triggers. Needs, most undesirable behavior is a result of unmet needs. So we want to determine what unmet needs are causing the behavior and work towards meeting those needs. Sometimes it seems like that we are rewarding bad behavior, but in reality, we're helping the child to have their needs met and to eliminate the need for the behavior. I like the five A's. There are five basic human needs. We all need attention, and that's listening. Not agreeing, it's listening. Kids need a lot of listening. I need you to know what just happened to me. We don't want to talk them out of it. We don't want to give unsolicited advice out of it. We just want to sit and be a container and listen. That's the first day. We all need affection. Now, some kids who have trauma, whether it's sexual or physical abuse, are not able because it's too vulnerable, because it creates a trigger, an emotional trigger for them, they can't tolerate touch. So maybe affection is not an effective need to be met for them, but that's something you'll assess with the child. Even a pat on the back can startle them. We all need attention, affection, autonomy. We all need alone time sometimes. And that means to just slow down, take a rest, regroup with ourselves, whether it's downtime listening to music, something usually passive. It could be exercise, it could be reading, something that provides alone time and self-reflection time. We all need acknowledgement and acknowledgement is I exist. Somebody sees me, hears me and gets me. And that acknowledgement is crucial because we tend to dismiss and not validate. It's I'm sensing you're feeling this. Is that what I'm, am I getting that right? Am I picking up what you're telling me? I'm sensing, I'm thinking, I believe this is what's happening. Can you confirm that for me? So being curious with open-ended questions and saying things out loud to acknowledge, I see you, I hear you, and I believe you. Even if it's not based in reality, Someone says, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. The bigger it is, the more we need to validate it. I had a kid, parent would say, the complaint was, he keeps telling me he's stupid and I keep telling him he's not stupid. And I said, this is the iceberg effect. The next time he tells you I'm stupid, you need to go beneath the iceberg, meet the need. He's needing acknowledgement. There is a part of him that believes he's stupid. And we do need to acknowledge that. And when we do, it will lessen the behaviors because he'll feel heard, seen, and received. And the parent did just that and it lessened it. And we could explore it more. And the intensity, frequency, and duration of I'm stupid, I'm stupid, lessened. So it's really important to acknowledge there are unmet needs especially with big behavior. And the last unmet need is appreciation. We all need appreciation. And you know, with kids who've experienced trauma, their behaviors are scary, confusing, angry, emotional, impactful, big. It can be the only thing we see. 
And if we can just begin to point out positives, little pieces, well, thank you for throwing out your plate. That means a great deal and help out. Good job. I appreciate you for be doing your part. I appreciate you for coming to me when you needed help. And I know that was not easy. So we're appreciating their strengths and their vulnerabilities, so crucial. So those are the um, five needs. Emotions, another part of the iceberg effect. Many behaviors are associated with negative emotions, especially in children who've experienced trauma. Helping children to regulate emotions can make a huge difference in improving behavior. Teach children about emotional regulation. And I have many mental health videos for kids, helping them learn tools to cope with their emotions. Help them to practice self-regulation through games, activities, my anger bag, my sad bag, five ways to hack your stress, prompt, support, and guide until they can regulate emotions on their own. There's also another program called the ALERT program. Great way to teach kids that your body, when it's having big emotions, is on alert. And we want to learn how to go inside our bodies and think. What is, and they use the analogy of a car, your body is like an engine. And sometimes your engine's running too hot or you're running all over the place. Sometimes it's running too low and maybe it's not in the lane and it's all over the place, but it's not thinking clearly and it doesn't know which way to turn. And then our bodies are running just right in our own lane. The ALERT program is a great tool for kids to help them go inside, think about and identify what they're thinking, what, how they're feeling and what they can do about it. And the last piece of the iceberg effect is triggers. A trigger can be absorbed through the five senses. And if you think about it, this is how trauma is absorbed through the five senses. That's sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. Any sense can trigger and set off a memory or flashback, transporting the child back to the traumatic event that they have experienced. So we want to be on the lookout, and it's being a sensory detective, be on the lookout for triggers. Identify with them, talk with the child about them, try to avoid them. Something I do with parents is I ask them, do a mapping journal. The next time you see your child flip their lid and act out emotionally and you see them triggered, a trigger is what's hysterical, we must assume is historical, is something to do with the past. So a mapping journal is very simple. Actually, all you need to get is some paper, some lined paper. You're going to log who, what, where, when, and how. It's called being a sensory detective. Where were we? What time of day was it? How did it happen? When did it happen? And why do you think it happened? Easy answer the questions. You're going to begin to see patterns. A lot of the time we don't know what the trigger is. It's very hard, especially with kids who've had early trauma histories and we don't have any of the information. And a lot of kids who come into the child welfare system, we don't know what happened to them. So it's hard for all of us. We see it through a lot of these big behaviors, but we just don't know. So by doing a mapping journal, you're able to start seeing a pattern. Every time we go to the park, there seems to be something at the park triggering for the child. Maybe something actually happened at a park that was overwhelming. And if you were to look back at their history, if you were to gain a full history, you might see and recognize that something did happen at a park that was overwhelming and traumatizing. So it's important to understand what drives behavior through the iceberg effect. The kid who has experienced trauma is not trying to push your buttons. He's having a healthy response to an unhealthy internal threat do not take these behaviors personally. So what we want to learn to do is be an owl. And that's observe, watch, and listen. 
And that's literally taking a step back. As a mother myself, I've many times taken my deep breaths, literally taken a step back to help me visually, spatially assess the situation before reacting or judging because we are all going through things, especially right now. We all have compromised mental health challenges. So we want to be an owl to others and we want to be an owl to ourselves. 